So welcome to uh, the first talk of WordCamp. You guys excited to start the day? Yeah! I'm not a morning person either, so it's <laughs> All right, all right. So this is everything that you need to know about turning your WordPress site into a lead generation machine. That sounds like a fancy title, and it is. But um, basically, my name is David Wells. Uh, I run a company called Inbound Now where we do custom WordPress design and development and inbound marketing consulting. Um, in a past life, I was a marketing consultant at HubSpot. I'm sure some of you are familiar with HubSpot, a Boston-based area. And this is a lot of the methodologies that came from my time there. Um, and stuff that I implement into client site on a regular basis, and it works extremely, extremely well. And this is for both B2B companies and B2C companies. So let me start off by asking you guys to close your eyes, and I want you to pull up your imaginary web browser in your mind and travel to your home page of your site. And I want you to look and see if you can find, you know, where are the different conversion points on your site right now? Do you have, uh, most, of, most people, every single website pretty much has a contact us page with a form on it. So that's pretty typical, but what I'm gonna talk about is implementing different conversion points for people that aren't necessarily ready to take that step and actually contacting you, giving you their phone number and all their information, their social security number, et cetera. Um, but by capturing a lot of your website traffic, that's not ready to do that. So the typical, typical conversion process, um, typical inbound marketing conversion process looks a little something like this, where a visitor comes into your web page, they see a call to action on, on that particular page. Hopefully you do have different calls to action on every single page of your site. If you don't, that's something we'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, that leads them into a landing page. And a landing page is simply a page on your site that has uh, a form on it to capture their information. Um, they, they are intrigued by what that landing page says. They want whatever is behind that form, and they fill it out. To re-illustrate this point, here's another diagram for you. Basically, a prospect, again, comes into the site, sees a call to action. Um, and this call to action is not contact us today, it's not request a quote, it's more uh, targeted towards those people that are in the informational stage of the process. A majority of your website traffic, they're not coming to your site ready to buy today. They're actually looking for, they're doing research, they're in that informational stage and they might, they're, they're looking for more information on exactly what you do or what services you provide. And you can bet your bottom dollar that they're also going to competitors' websites as well, looking at their sites. So what you want to do, um, well, currently, you know, those people on the site that are in that informational stage, they're not going to fill out that contact us form, and they're going to leave your site, and you're never going to know who they are. And that's the most awful situation you could find yourself in, and you want to find out who these people are. Google Analytics will only tell us a little bit of information like where they came from, what city and state, uh, but that's pretty much useless from a practical standpoint. What you want to do is entice them with a content offer on your site. Um, this is something like a, let me that up. so this is something like a free white paper, a free ebook, a free guide, um, checklist of the eight things that you need to think about before selecting this service provider or something like that. Something that piques their interest that's gonna get them to click on that particular call to action and lead them into that landing page. There's a couple different types of content offers um, and, and a lot of, uh, there's kind of a spectrum here of what uh, kind of stage people are in the buying cycle and what offers kind of fit their particular needs at that particular time. So I mentioned the top of the funnel content offers, and that would be something that's very, very uh, informational, not product focused at all, it doesn't you know, tout your services. It's really teaching them something useful that they need to know. So for example, someone in the audience here is in real estate, 
And basically, you know, when someone comes into that site, if they land on a particular um, real estate page, you want to ask them, you, you want to have a call to action that said something like, you know, the eight things, the eight questions to ask yourself before financing your new home purchase or something like that. That's going to spark someone's interest that's in that informational phase and say, wow, there's eight questions? I can maybe think of three. I'm going to click through and see what that's all about. They click through on the landing page, convert. You now have some, some uh, their contact information that you can follow up with either directly or via uh, an email nurturing campaign. Then there's uh, you know people in the buying cycle that are a little bit further down the buying process, a little bit further down the buying funnel, um, where free webinars, case studies, uh, FAQ sheets, product catalogs um, kind of suit them uh, a little bit more. Um, and then you have uh, your typical um, offers that you see on a majority of sites, and this is you know, on the majority of sites, all you see is, you know, hey, take a free trial, request a free consultation, contact us today. But again, the majority of people on your site are there for the first time in that informational stage. So what you want to do is uh, capture their information with a top of the funnel offer. Um, so, yeah. so some, some call to action best practices. Uh, so, so now that you know that you know why the content offer is so important to have, and, and these content offers don't have to be you know Shakespearean literature. They can really be one to two pages, a PDF document that you create uh, of common questions that you get asked all the time um, to kind of educate your buyer and capture their information. Uh, once you have those content offers, you're going to want to create your calls to action. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to implement this into WordPress as well. Um, but here's some call to action and best practices. You want to place your informational call to action for that content offer above the fold on uh, every page of your website. And the ideal situation is every page of your website. Um, if it's below the fold, you're, you're banking on the fact that they're going to go to that page and actually scroll down. A majority of times, that's not the case, and you're going to see a lower click-through rate on that particular call to action. Uh, if it's a blog post, put a call to action at the bottom of that blog post that links to some, some more relevant content to that particular, whatever that topic of that blog post is about. Um, you want to be really clear on what the content offer is. Uh, you don't want to just have a button that says, you know, download our free webinar or download our free white paper. Because um, this isn't a, a brand new concept, a lot of people are doing this, and a lot of people have downloaded white papers in the past, and you're not telling them what they're going to learn, what the benefit is to them if they download a white paper. When they see that, they just say, oh great, another, another uh, white paper. I don't know what it's about, so I'm really not interested. So you want to be very clear in your call to action. Uh, another mistake that I see people make is with their calls to action, they try to blend it in too much with their current site design. And this is something you want your call to action, like the definition of call to action is something that stands out and it's, it's, should be the first thing that that person notices on the page. So you use contrasting colors. It doesn't have to look awful. You can make a beautiful call to action that has contrasting colors. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of resources on how to do that. And then most importantly, with your calls to action, you want to make sure that's contextually relevant to that particular page. So let's say, for example, that I'm, uh, let's see, a, an insurance broker. Uh, on my website, I have an auto insurance page, and I have a homeowner's insurance page. On that homeowner's insurance page, I want to have a content offer that re relates to homeowner's insurance. I don't necessarily want to have a learn the, uh, or, you know, the, the buying auto insurance guide checklist on the homeowner's uh, page because that wouldn't make any sense. It's not contextually relevant and you're going to have to see a lower click-through rate. And I'm going to show you guys some ways uh, in which to uh, contextually place calls to action on a per page, per uh, post basis inside of WordPress. So uh, how would you create these calls to action? Um, use Photoshop. Photoshop is one of the best tools that I have in my toolbox. It's not that hard to learn. You can learn the basics of Photoshop in 25 minutes. This is a link to a video. 
uh, on Lifehacker. It's our Australian Lifehacker. But it's a great video. We're going to walk you through every single little tool. You can download a free trial of Photoshop for 30 days. Um, and it, it's a skill that you can take with you in really any job that you have. If you can manipulate graphics, if it uh, eliminates workflow um, problems and bottlenecks, and you basically won't have to outsource all of your work to an expensive graphic designer. Um, and you can also buy professionally designed call to action and banner templates from a site called graphicriver.net. They range from three to six dollars. So instead of paying you know, upwards of four hundred dollars for a graphic for your site, you can go buy a layered Photoshop template, edit that, and it will do the job for you. Uh, or you can hire a designer. That's the other option if you're scared of Photoshop. But I highly recommend learning a new skill, and Photoshop is very handy. Um, and then there's an easy kind of newbie way out. Uh, you can upload an image and use pickfont.com. Basically what that'll allow you to do is use any image and put text over that image. So you can use that um, if you want something quick. It's not as pretty, but it's the job done. So here's a couple examples of some calls to action. Um, these would be uh, in the bottom of a blog post. And you can see that they clearly illustrate like what, what if they click on this, what they're going to get. Another thing that I'd recommend with your calls to action is actually having a button on there that tells them what to do. Tell them to click on it, tell them to register now, um, tell them to download now. It, it helps um, get people actually clicking through. Here's an example of uh, some banner calls to action. Calls to action don't need to be in a specific place as long as it's above the fold. Make sure that it fits in with your kind of site layout, and there's ways you can tweak that with your WordPress theme. Um, and then also in your sidebar, obviously you want to have calls to action on those particular blog posts and pages on your site. Cool. And then another kind of, uh, this is a little bit more advanced, but adding lightbox pop-ups for your calls to action, they work insanely well uh, in converting visitors. And most people, or some people will say they're annoying. Oh, I don't, I don't like that, it's a bad user experience. Um, there's actually been some studies done. Dan Zarella, social media scientist of HubSpot, actually did a study with a uh, pop-up on his site. It actually, when he turned off the light box pop-up, his uh, subscriptions kind of tanked. Um, and when he turned it back on, they, they doubled. So it, it's a very clear, and, and I've seen this as well with uh, the clients that I've worked with implementing this. You can have it so it pops up only once and they never see it again. Um, but yeah. Cool. So with calls to action, you always, you, you always want to be testing as well. Like you can't say, you know, the, the examples that I showed you, um, that, that's just one variation of the test that we do. Um, you want to be testing the copy, you want to be testing the color screen, you want to be testing the copy on the, de the download button. Um, there's no way to know what works for your particular audience unless you're doing some sort of A-B test. Even the, the best expert in the world could not predict um, you know, what would work the best unless they're testing. So if someone says, no, this will work and let's only use this, there, don't listen to that person. Cool. And then there's a link down here for uh, a free tool to use to A-B test calls to action is Google's website optimizer. And uh, you can follow that link. And, and by the way, this presentation is on my site, so you don't have to furiously write all this stuff down. I should have mentioned that uh, at the beginning. But basically, uh, the link's at the end. Uh, I'll show that to you guys. Cool. So now once all these pieces are in place and you have those content offers, again, I cannot stress the importance enough of why you should have these content offers on your site. You're going, if you do this, you will see more people converting on your website, period. It, it works 100% of the time. Whatever industry you're in, so do it. And if it doesn't, send me an email and I'll help you make it better. But once you have all these steps in place, what do you do with that lead? What do you do with that person once they actually convert into that lead on your site on that informational offer? What do you do? So you want to follow up with them. 
if it's a hot lead and it's a company that you know or it's somebody that looks like they'd be a, a, an ideal customer, reach out to them you know, directly. Send them an email or if you're capturing uh, their phone number on that form, uh, go ahead and give them a call. Uh, quick tip, if you put a phone number on a form, the conversion rate plummets. Uh, people, when you fill out your phone number in a form, they know that they're going to get a call, so people will not do it or fill in a fake phone number. So with the top of the funnel content offers, just ask first name, uh, last name, email, and maybe company name, or maybe their website. Keep it very, very simple. The lower uh, amount of form fields there are, the higher the conversion rate is going to be. But once they actually convert and they become a lead, you want to set up a drip. If you're not following up directly, you want to set up a, an email drip uh, campaign. Uh, or lead nurturing campaign. And this is an example of, uh, so on my site, if you go to Inbound Now, you'll see a couple different content offers on the site that speak directly to my business. One is the five critical pieces, uh, the five critical marketing pieces to implement on your WordPress site. Um, so you'll see that call to action everywhere on my site. If you click through it, it'll go to a landing page. Once you convert on that landing page, you've dropped into a, an email lead nurturing campaign that follows up with other relevant information. The main point of the lead nurturing campaign is to pull that person that's, again, in that informational stage, not ready to buy, pull them back into your site at a later date uh, to check out more of your content or maybe to uh, check out some of your services or what have you. But you can see here in this email, I say, you might also be interested in these related blog posts about WordPress. So I link into my site, I'm pulling them back in. On those, on those blog posts, there's other calls to action either you know, contact us today or download our other uh, blogging guide. Um, and that's kind of the idea. You want to pull them back into the site. And there's really no other way to do that other than setting up a trip campaign. You don't want to leave it up to them. That's the main point I want to stress. Because the internet's a very big place. The chances of them coming back to your site on their own are very slim. So we want to cut that down as much as possible. And you want to you want to make these as as information rich and relevant to the initial conversion points possible, and that's uh, what we're doing here. Cool. So just a quick recap. So incoming traffic comes into your web page. They see the call to action on that particular page that relates to the content on that page that sparks something or or speaks to an immediate need that they might have, like a guide. Like the eight things you need to know, and I keep saying eight things, you know, this is just off the top of my head. I have a, I have a tool on my site that'll help you come up with different content offer ideas, um, which I can give you guys a link to uh, on the afterwards. But uh, they click through on that call to action, they go into that landing page, the landing page is, page is clearly laid out and reiterates what that call to action promised, it's, uh, and, and you know, has that simple lead capture form on there. They fill that out, and now you have a web lead. If it's a highly qualified lead, again, follow up directly. Most websites, their lead flow isn't at so high that they can't follow up directly with every lead. But if it's you know someone that doesn't look like they might they might not be a good fit for your business, you can kind of let that automated email flow pull them back into the site, see if they'll convert on a, an offer further down the buying cycle, see if they're a little bit more interested. And yeah, those email campaigns will bring those repeat visitors and hopefully get them to convert on those other offers. And this process you would rinse and repeat with hopefully every single page on your site, every single service that you offer, creating a very specific content offer on that page. And then also, so, and with these, with these calls to action on the page, it's not to say that you need to get rid of your request a quote button or your request a quote form. Um, or you know anything like that. You can actually have the informational call to action at the top, and then right underneath have your you know request a quote, talk to an expert today, um, contact us today, whatever that bottom of the funnel. Uh, because some people are in that stage, so it's okay to have more than one call to action on a page. Um, but yeah, so that's and after you do this, basically you beat the internet. That's like my big, that's like my punchline. <laughs> all right, all right. That's a little bit. Uh, 
I love that. I use the picture in every presentation. I don't know. Got, it's the greatest picture ever. All right. So, um, yeah. So, okay. I thought this, hey, David, I thought this was a WordPress conference. What was, what, you know, where's WordPress coming? Okay. So, I'll talk about some recommended plugins that I use to kind of implement these different pieces onto my site and then into client sites. So, for lead capture, there's a lot of different forms out there. Again, this presentation is online, and the link will be here in a second. But uh, for lead capture, Gravity Forms is one of the best form plugins I've ever seen. It's not free, but it's definitely worth it. I think it's around like $70 or something, which sounds steep, but it's pretty cool. And you can do some email stuff through it as well, some really basic email stuff. Um, Premise is a landing page tool. Uh, from the people over at CopyBlogger, where you can kind of set up custom landing pages. Contact Form 7 is the free contact form uh, plugin that you can use and is one of the most popular. Um, for email, for, uh, and you can use any ESP as well. So like four forms, so if you use MailChimp, Constant Contact, Aweber, the list goes on and on and on. All those services allow you to create forms to export and put on your site um, into that landing page. And once they fill that out, they'll get um, dropped into that particular nurture campaign. I would actually recommend to use an, an ESP or some sort of marketing tool for your forms so it's automatically set up. There's, there's extensions for Gravity Forms and probably Contact Form 7 to hook it up to your email provider, but um, I would just use the forms from the email tools themselves. Um, and then for landing pages, I recommend using custom post types to create your landing pages. So the thing with landing pages is you want it to be, you want it to fit the design of your site, but you want to do some custom things to that particular page. Namely, remove the navigation and remove all the clutter, remove all of your footer items. When they're on that landing page, you want them to do nothing else but fill out that form on that page. So having your entire site's navigation, having footer stuff, having social media icons and what have you um, to link out to your profiles, that's just all distractions and it's, it's leaving them out of that page. You basically want to capture them on that page where they can't leave, um, which sounds weird, but that's what you want to do from a marketing standpoint. Um, and you can do that with custom post types. You can set up your own custom page template and remove um, any navigation, any extraneous elements that you want to get rid of there. And this is just a quick screenshot example of how uh, I set that up on Inbound Now. I can show you guys a lot of examples if you have time. So for uh, contextual plugins, um, getting those calls to action in your sidebars and on different places of your site. There are two plugins that I recommend, uh, custom widget areas for WordPress. This will allow you to create an unlimited amount of sidebars without any uh, technical or coding knowledge. And basically what you can do, so in that um, insurance example, you know, I could create a, a specific sidebar for my homeowner's insurance page. I can create a specific sidebar for my auto insurance page and then drop in that call to action and like a text widget or something in that sidebar and toggle them on on a per page, per post basis. So in particular blog post that I read about auto insurance, I can have that sidebar that has that relevant contextual call to action in it. Same thing with Widget Ninja, it works a little bit differently um, where you basically have your, your normal sidebars that you already have in your WordPress site, but you specify what widget you want to show up on what page. It's a little bit, a little bit more of a learning curve uh, using that one, but yeah, I recommend the first one if you're very, very new. And I know this is the beginning track, so. All right, cool. And then a shameless, relevant plug. Um, we're inbound now is actually launching a new call to action plugin that allows uh, WordPress site owners to place uh, potential calls to action in their content and sidebars automatically. So it'll detect different keywords in your posts, um, be referring uh, whatever keyword they're typing into Google to get to your site. It, it can actually serve up a call to action based off that. They're referring uh, 
sites, like if they're coming in from Twitter, we could show them a call to action based off that. Um, and this is a special link for you guys here today. Um, we're open, this is, this is like the official announcement. This is exciting. I feel like Steve Jobs right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're really excited about this. But wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, I need to start over there. Um, all right. So yeah, so that's the link, uh, eventhow.com slash beta. Um, and we're only taking 100 people, so, so sign up as soon as possible. And I'll take you to your landing page. Um, but yeah, cool. So yeah, so any questions, comments, concerns? This is where the presentation can be found, eventhow.com slash wordcamp. Question. When you create a um, call to action, on a page, what do you suggest in terms of forms of contact? Do you give multiple forms of contact, email, phone, num a phone number, a form, maybe a widget where they could pull down their email provider? Because I know that in most websites, if people have to click more than three times, a lot of people get frustrated and get off. So what is the best practice for converting? In other words, because people communicate in different ways. Some people might want to email, some might want to call, some might want to right, go to right. form, some might want to go to their own. So you want you want to have your, I mean, if you list your phone number uh, on your site, you definitely want to have that option available. That's people calling you, That's that, that would be an example of a way bottom of the funnel offer. Like they're calling you, they're talking to you. When you talk to someone, it's basically a sales situation. When you call a business owner and you're talking to them, asking them questions, because they can turn that conversation around. Filling out a form is a lot less, uh, you know, formal, and it's not that high pressure sales situation. It's more you basically email back and forth. So you want to have both options. So, so to, in other words, people who just want to be at the bottom of the funnel, or people who want a higher level of engagement. Yeah. So you can on, on your landing pages if you want to put your phone number on there. By all means, do it. You know, some people will call you about it. I just have one more question. Yeah, sure. When you have the um, the you know the context in the blog, and then the, the navigation and the call to um, action was over on the right, it seemed like it should be the opposite way. If the call to action is the most important thing, should it be on the left so it's more eye catching, like in a resume in the top left, and then the context with the blog on the right? So which uh... I don't know, it was in one of your slides. You sh it showed, I always think that, yeah, see like WordPress itself, the most important thing like with navigation should be off to the right, because we read right to left. So shouldn't the call to action be on the right? So this but is one was the opposite in one of your slides. This is, mm, no, this it's is back. Bad, bad, bad way back. I forgot it. Mm, before I oh, nope. So, like my calls to action are in the sidebar. I also have uh, an area that I can place calls to action up here. Yeah, uh, it would but seem more effective to be under inbound now on that side. In other words, because you want people to maybe go over to the, the right hand side, read, but then their eye to fall back to the left. Do you understand? We're in I mean, now. There, there, like I do have a place I could put calls to action right there, but I mean you want to leverage your sidebar. Like your sidebar should you should have call you should have conversion points at the top of your sidebar as well. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and I do have some posts on here. I don't have it pulled up right now, but I have a call to action area at the top. Uh, quick, quick question about about your process uh, and here uh, you have the download now button. Uh, and so on one of that page that you were on, if, yeah, so there. Uh, a lot of places will have an AWeber button right right there and will ask you to, let's say, put in your email. So what is the reason that you have the uh, conversion to go from, a landing, from here to a landing page and taking the email only there rather than removing that step? Yep, so. Uh, and, and, a, and another, uh, another follow-up question. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, there, that is another way that you can do it. Um, I typically do, I use both methods actually. I'm working on my about page right now. I have a form directly on that page. Uh, but basically, with the call to action, it is adding an additional step into the process, but you, 
on that landing page, you have more room to basically illustrate what the point is, why they would download that, and, and reiterating the value to them. Uh, so you find it helps your conversions by having that extra step? So, yeah. I mean, I do. I also have a pop-up on here, a Lightbox pop-up. It's for my newsletter list right now, but I switch it out with the content offer as well. So it'll just pop up and have the, the picture of the guy and the email form right there, so they can convert right there. But you're right. He makes a really great point. Anything that you're doing with online marketing, take as many steps out of the process as possible. But the reason I did this is to reiterate the point and what they're going to learn in that guide. Uh, okay. Another question is, can you go over the places in the funnel and the content that you offer at each place in the funnel? And when, when is a free trial too far down in the funnel? And when might a free trial be earlier, earlier possible in the funnel? And the difference between the different white papers and FAQs? Okay. Yeah, sure. So for my particular business, um, so we do stuff. If I go back to my home page. Um, so I have um, my two calls to action on my home page is getting a free inbound marketing assessment. That's uh, actually scheduling a call with me. And we get on a go-to meeting. It's basically, uh, it's not a sales call, but you know, when you talk, I basically go through their site, see areas of weakness and you know, how we can help and what have you. So that would be an example of a bottom of the funnel offer, where they're like we're actually getting to talk to one another. The guide is is something for people that are just coming to the site that may be new to WordPress or they're trying to you know beef up the marketing on their WordPress site. Does that answer your question? Yeah, um, you talked about putting. <laughs> Uh, Dave, you talked about putting um, forms, uh, contact forms in Lightbox, or I use Shadowbox, but I guess it's the same thing. One of the problems I've been having in optimizing my sites for mobile, um, I'm having a lot of trouble getting forms to look good on Lightboxes in, in mobile environments, and I'm wondering, is that just because mobile is not good for Lightbox? Should I focus on doing a different page for my mobile, optimize sites and have it in sidebar, or just in the main page? What do you think about that? Yes, so with the, I, I have the same problem, and I just put some conditional logic in my light box to not show up on mobile devices. Um, you can mess around with CSS and stuff, and there might be a light box that is mobile friendly, but I haven't found anything out there um, yet, so let me know. Question? Go ahead and shout it out. We have two minutes left. Oh. Um, I'm kind of new. WordPress web design. However, on the back end of setting up something like this where you're collecting a lot of information, do you, in the database itself, how do you make sure you have enough space on your website to accommodate all this new information that you collect? I mean, is that... So the it? leads, it depends on where you're capturing leads, but you shouldn't run into a database issue. Um, you know, it, it should be able to hold so any more leads. leads. Yeah. And WordPress can, offers a free web so this is for just WordPress uh, .org sites, self-hosted WordPress sites. So that, that's what you're talking about, right? Okay. Question. When you were talking about the uh, lead, um, the the form capture, and then the ESPs with the um, drip lead nurturing, do any of those ESPs? I know Infusionsoft works with a CRM program. So what outside of Infusionsoft, because what I would want is for them to fill out a form, go into a lead drip, uh, capture campaign, and then be dumped into a CRM yep. system for sales. So it all linked from, you know, from the beginning to the end. So which, which ESPs do that besides Infusionsoft? So I believe most of them do. Uh, and you can hook up to like Salesforce or Sugar CRM is a really popular one, cheaper than Salesforce. I use HubSpot um, personally on my site. It's a little bit more expensive, but really all of the major email service providers have APIs and they should tie into your, your CRM. So like a Basecamp and et cetera, et cetera. So it really just depends. My favorite ESP outside of HubSpot is MailChimp. 
Um, they just have like a very beautifully designed product, very easy to use, and it's really cheap too. Yeah. All right, so I'm getting the cut off. I'll be here all day today, all day tomorrow. Come up and say hi. And if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to drop me a line.